Hey, Steve here, and welcome to another video where I'm going to be just doing another editing walkthrough using the Pulsar black and white plugin to create a pretty cool looking black and white image at the end of it. And the purpose of this video is just to give you another look at how I personally use the panel. And so you can familiarize yourself with it a little bit more and start to figure out how to integrate it into your own black and white workflow. So knowing that this image is going to require a handful of saved selections, that's what I'm going to do first, and then we'll actually crack on with the black and white editing part of it. So if you're familiar and you know all perfectly happy with creating and cutting out objects and elements within your photographs, then you can probably just skip forward to the bit where we start the editing. But I will include the object selections in here for anyone who uh, would like to see that. So the selections that I'm looking at creating are going to be one for this top left corner, one for this building here on the top right, the main building in the middle here, this is Australia Square in Sydney, and then the background. And I'll think about whether we can cut the sky out uh, using the sky selection as well. But one thing to note when using the, uh, the object selection tool here in Photoshop is that it tends to create kind of blurred edges just to help blend, uh, blend the selection in, especially when it's the sky selection. Uh, so just watch out for that because it can cause issues if you're not looking out for it. But yeah, we'll come to that. Anyway, for now, I'm going to start off using the pen tool and I'm going to zoom in and go to at least 100%. And I'm just going to start drawing around these edges here. Now, one thing that I did notice about this particular building, I don't know why, but it's got quite a rough edge. Um, we can see here, so we might have to do some uh, some work with the refine edge tool in Photoshop. Like if I just draw a line straight across there, we can see it's not quite straight that building. Yeah, let's let's just see how we go with a kind of a rough selection, making it as good as we can. And the reason I like the pen tool, one of the reasons I like the pen tool is because if you place a point and it's in the wrong place, you can just press command or control Z to undo that. Whereas if we're using this uh, polygon lasso tool up here, it's not as easy. So anyway, I'm just going to continue around here, close the path and I'll make a selection. Click OK. And now I have the selection before I save it. I'm just going to go to this select and select and mask here. And we're going to see if we can use the refine edge tool to just make that a little bit better. So let me zoom in. And we can see here those straight lines weren't really working. So let's grab the refine edge and I'm just going to draw along the edge here. And usually, that's going to be all we need to do for an edge like this, where it's quite obvious what the edge is. Photoshop's going to be able to pick that up. So let's just continue all the way along. Yep. Okay. Let's click OK. Now we have our selection. We can save that in the plugin with this button here, Save Active Selection. And we'll call this Top Left. Click OK. Now we have top left over here. So if I deselect the selection, I can now get it back by hitting top left. Okay, let's uh, work on top right. Maybe I'll fast forward this bit, speed it up a bit. I think the building is a little bit better. So we're not going to have to go through that refine edge thing. So let me just zoom in. Okay, now we can save this. So make a selection first zero feather save that as top right i'm pretty confident that's going to be quite an accurate selection oh in saying that oh, i'm completely wrong <laughs> hang on a minute okay let's delete the top right there and do that line again why is that so off all right let's let's do the refine edge again so select select and mask Okay, that's looking a lot better now. So we'll 
Save this now as top right. So now we have two selections. We've got top left and top right. Next, we'll isolate Australia Square, this uh, round building that's got an awesome cocktail bar at the top, a rotating or revolving bar, which takes about an hour to go around. You can see the whole Sydney Harbour. It's pretty nice. Uh, but anyway, we're getting off topic. Let's zoom in. Right, okay. Here. Again, for some reason, kind of does bow. I'm guessing this might be a bit of lens distortion, actually, which I probably should have corrected before we came into Photoshop. But this is where we are. So let's just deal with it. So if, if you have something like this and you need to slightly bend a line like we're going to have to do here, you can click sort of midway along that line with the pen tool and you'll know that it's going to do the right thing when you hover over the line and it gets that plus symbol on the mouse pointer so we'll click that to add a new point now i'm going to hold control which i think on the mac is command and i'm going to be able to drag this now to sort of shift the line from that point so let me zoom in a bit more and holding control i'm just going to bring it out that way a little bit and i'll just scroll up to make sure that line is nicely matching and i think it is now here we're actually going to have to do a series of uh, curved uh, lines so click there move it out got another straight line and then a curved line Okay, that's good. Make selection, click OK, save active selection, call this Australia Square. Don't know if it's intentionally ironically named, but there we go. Um, okay, so now we have three saved selections. We've put in all the effort in the beginning, but the time is going to have been well spent because it's going to allow us to do stuff a lot, lot quicker for the rest of the workflow. So top left, top right, Australia Square. Now let's get a selection for the background, i.e. everything that isn't these three selections. So Command or Control A to select the whole canvas. And then I'm gonna subtract each one of these using this minus button. One, two, three. And I'm gonna save this as the background. So BG and deselect that. Now I'm just going to see what it looks like if I use the object selection tool to make a selection of the sky. It's probably going to be pretty good. There's quite a clear cut and obvious sky as far as Photoshop's concerned here. So it looks okay. So let's save that now as a sky, but we'll use it carefully. We'll make sure that everything looks good if we do come to use this. Um, and then, okay. Can we isolate these background buildings here? I'm not going to be doing too much individually to these buildings, but I might like to separate them from the sky when I'm uh, when I'm sort of editing the background. So to do that, we can load the background and then subtract the sky. And that's going to leave us with those buildings. So what should we call that? Uh, BG buildings, I guess. Okay, we're in a pretty good place. So from here, let's start with the black and white conversion. And you know, I've given a few different options here and you can feel free to use whichever ones you like, but linear contrast for me on the gradient map, that usually does a pretty good job. I like how that works. So it's already looking pretty good because the light in the image is already quite dynamic with that side light on the building there. So from here, usually the next stage that I would like to do is to um, to darken the sky slash background. I think I will use the background selection for this rather than just the sky. And then if we're going to light these buildings up, yeah, well, let's see how it looks first. So let's make a selection for the background and the white point here. I think I mentioned in the first video, if you want to use this to sort of darken a background, then somewhere between 
10, 15, 20 on the white point slider tends to work quite well. So we'll try that. And that is all right, actually, that's sort of darkened it nicely. It's removed a lot of contrast, but we still do have a fair amount of detail in here in the buildings in the background and we can sort of still make out the clouds in the sky. So that's pretty good. I'm just noticing that does seem to be a little bit of a light edge to this building here. So yeah, I think we did probably as much as we can with the refine edge tool to, to fix that up. So what I'm thinking is when we get to the end of the workflow, we will just fix any haloing that has uh, occurred there. And there's an easy technique for that. If you haven't seen it before, um, I'll show you that. So uh, from here, let's think about what we can do to, uh, to really make this stand out. So I think the top left needs to be even more silhouetted than it is right now. So let's start with some adjustments on the top left and maybe we'll bring a gradient in from the top left there coming down towards the right Add a black gradient, linear gradient that darkens that up quite nicely, but we'll just pull the opacity back a touch. This building here in the top right, let's select that and we'll stick with the light that's in the image. So it's darker here, lighter on this left edge. So let's add a dark gradient that kind of follows that same condition. So coming in at that angle, we'll add that dark gradient there. Maybe pull it back a bit. And then let's flip it and do the same thing, but in reverse with a white gradient coming in on this bottom edge. And uh, let's load the selection again and we can hit the linear gradient. Okay, that, that looks pretty good. I think actually let's let's load the gradient tool here and maybe just switch the angle around a bit. Just stretch that up that way. Yeah, okay, that's good. And then if we bring a bit more of the black one back in with the opacity, I'm liking that, but maybe we can add another lightness to this edge. So let's see what it looks like with another gradient. So let's go again, top right. Yeah, okay, that's that's caught the edge. Hang on, let's move that back on top. That's caught the edge a lot more. That's kind of what I wanted to do there. And let's have a look at the main building, Australia Square, the star of the shot. So we'll load that and get rid of this. This blooming bar keeps getting in the way. Whenever I make a new selection, it puts this thing right in the way of the image. But anyway. Again, we, we can see we've already got light hitting the right side of this and shade on the left. So let's just enhance that by basically giving it more of what's already there. So let's start off with the dark side and we'll come in from the left. Add that linear gradient. Pretty good. Let's just pull the opacity back so it's not completely black down there in the bottom corner. Maybe we'll do another one slightly from the top left coming down. So Australia Square. Again, that way, and then reduce the opacity. And now we'll do the same thing for a white gradient coming in from the right. And I'll favor the top more than the bottom this time, I think. Uh, so let's load the selection and linear gradient. That's probably stretched a little bit too far to the left compared to what I wanted. So let's load the gradient tool and just maybe rearrange this a little bit. So it's more, more just favoring the, the top right of the building there. It's just kind of kissing that edge now. Okay, that's pretty good. Looking at this now, I'm thinking this previous adjustment here that we did to enhance this light edge. Well, I still want that, but I don't want it to be quite as light as it is over here on the right hand side just where it exits the frame so let's load another selection top right and i think i'll do a black gradient this time going straight from right to left yeah that's more like it okay just maybe pull that back a touch and maybe 
the gradient coming in from the bottom just so that again we're not leading the eye out of the frame with with such kind of brightness and high contrast down here so australia square let's do a bottom to top linear gradient that's way too much so let's pull it back start on zero opacity and just maybe bring it in like that yeah i think that's okay we'll leave it here right let's see so i haven't actually used anything other than the gradients really so far now let's have a look at what else we can do and how else we can use these selections so i mean once you've loaded a selection you can still do anything with that obviously that you you might want to do uh, any kind of edit that involves um, using a, a layer mask for example so in this case if i load the selection i can just add a curves adjustment and now that curves adjustment has that selection as its layer mask so we can now just add some contrast just to that building by um, by adding an s curve here with that selection loaded into the uh, into the mask as it happens i probably don't really want to go too far with this we'll leave it there maybe we'll just reduce the opacity a bit just a subtle contrast adjustment there let's have a look at the background so it depends on the aesthetic that you're going for i don't mind the fact that these buildings in the background are essentially you know they're, they're clearly edited out of the composition with the fact that we've made them so dark and you know it doesn't you know, if you're looking at what's realistic, it doesn't make sense that these are this dark and the building in the middle is, is as light as it is. I don't mind that because it brings attention to the main subject, but let's just see if we can bring some of this back. So let's load a selection for the background buildings. I don't know if a curves adjustment or maybe just some dodging and burning might be the best option, but let's try a curves adjustment. So that's loaded the buildings into the layer mask of that curves adjustment so let's see if we pull this all the way up here just keeping in mind i think i'm going to mask this in in a minute so okay let's leave it there now actually while i'm moving this around let me just show you the thing that i was warning about when using the sky selection tool all right if i go all the way up here just to really exaggerate the uh, the effect we can see the buildings around here start to halo because and end up alongside here because you know that's that's part of what the object selection tool is doing when we're using it to select and isolate the sky it creates a non hard line or non hard edged selection so that's just something something to look out for there as it happens i'm not looking to use this to an extreme that that halo is going to be a problem but it's just a good demonstration of the problem that i was talking about i'm going to add this to its own group so control or command g that's going to add it to a second group and the reason for that is now i can add a layer mask to this group and add like a second level of masking so i'll command or control i to invert that mask so now this curves adjustment is in that group that's now being completely masked out and now i can just take a white brush and just gradually see if it works if I just bring a little bit of some of this back in and yeah I don't think I want to do too much of that it might be enough even if I just go and reduce the opacity on this now yeah okay we'll leave it there that's that's good enough so um well that <laughs> that's that's enough of that effect <laughs> I should say All right now one other thing that I wanted to just see if it was going to look any good on this image and that is the use of a radial gradient first let's make a selection of the sky and let's switch this up here to the white end and we'll hit the radial button and yeah it's added a bit of a bit of a glow in the background there but because it's so dark it's not making it light enough basically so let's get rid of that we'll do it again in the normal blend mode sky white normal blend mode radial and let's just move it over like over here just sort of behind these buildings where the original light source was coming from 
maybe something like that. Yeah, okay, that's that's pretty good. And then maybe let's reduce the opacity or not. That looks a bit mushy when we did that. How about soft light? No, that still doesn't work. Well, I mean, I think that looks pretty interesting. So it's whether you whether you prefer like a light a, a dark sky like this or yeah, adding adding something like this in just to really highlight those uh, silhouetted buildings there. And do you know what? With those silhouetted buildings, I wonder if I wonder if I should just get rid of this particular adjustment, or at least make it a uh, more of a contrast adjustment than a just pure brightening. Yeah, maybe something like that. It's looking pretty weird in the curves adjustment, but that's because it's such a small sliver of the histogram. Yeah, okay. I think I think we'll leave it like that. Um and okay, well this is a pretty cool looking shot, I think. I'm quite happy with that. Now just let's return to the issue with the halo up here. Now you'll notice the halo has kind of disappeared, and that's because I've put this radial gradient behind it, which makes the background lighter than the halo was. So if we do this turn that background off we can see we have the halo we turn it back on we can see no halo because the background is lighter so there's you know there's not an issue uh, we do still have down here where it transitions to being kind of uh, a slightly darker background for me this would be the finished version this would be the finished edit i quite like it but um i'll show you how to fix the halo anyway just in case you prefer something like this and do you know what? In fact, there is, it's not perfect. There is still haloing at the top here. So let's use the technique up here. The way to get rid of this light edge is to add a new layer, put that layer into the darken blend mode, and then we're gonna grab the clone stamp. We're gonna use this on 100% opacity and in this case, because the sky is lighter than the object and the halo obviously is a light halo against this dark object, what we need to do is sample the sky just as close to the halo as we can get. So alter option, click in the sky there, and then we're just going to clone over the edge and over the halo. And the reason that it's not cloning over the object in the front in in the foreground here is because the sky pixels that we're cloning are not darker than this object but they are darker than the halo so that's thanks to this dark and blend mode so we just continue on Anyway, that fixes that edge up quite nicely. And there is our finished image.